Would you like to win and achieve success at what you do? Welcome to the Winner's Ways podcast, where we create winners every day. And now your host, the author of Winner's Ways book and life coach, Bola Alabi. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Winner's Ways podcast. This is where we talk about your career, your money, and we give you life motivation to help you excel. Today we have an awesome guest with us. We have Patrick Yip. Patrick is the Director of Business Development at Appmex and One Gold. Right now, the economy is in chaos. Our stock market is nose diving. Uh, many of you, you are wondering, what's the next thing? Now, Patrick is going to tell us about all that type of investment that you guys can go into. Uh, without keeping you waiting, I'm going to bring in my guest, Patrick. Hey, Patrick, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Hey, uh, Patrick, welcome to the show. It's awesome to have you with us today. I'm excited about this, and I think... This is a good time to talk about uh, investments, portfolio allocation and diversification. And we are going to also talk about different investment cycle. We all know what's going on around the world with um, inflation at the moment. So we are going to delve into all those topics. Uh, but first, my audience, they would like to know you. So can you introduce yourself to us, Patrick? Yeah, so I am Patrick Yip. I'm the Director of Business Development at Atmex and OneGold. Um, if you haven't heard of Atmex, we are one of the largest online precious metals retailers in the U.S., if not the largest. Uh, we've been in business for over 20 years. We've done about 15 billion in retail sales um, in gold and silver and platinum and palladium. Um, I personally have been with the company for about 12 years. I've had various roles in merchandising, sales, project management, marketplaces, and now business development. Uh, most recently, I began running OneGold, which is an online investment platform that allows customers to own like a vaulted position of gold, silver, and platinum. Uh, OneGold's done north of 900 million in transactions in its first four years of operation. And I was also involved in launching the first Precious Metals Rewards credit card, um, and it's called the Bullion Card. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Can you tell us more about that uh, Precious uh, Metal Reward Card? Because this is the first time that I'm hearing about it. Yeah, this was actually a three-year um, in-process program, too. It's actually funny. I have not applied for a credit card in probably north of 15 years, but I did get one of these cards. It's called the Bullion Card. But basically what it is, so instead of earning cash back or airline miles, this card allows you to earn gold and silver as rewards. So the card offers 4% back um, if you make purchases on Atmex or One Gold, 1% back on your all your other purchases. So if you shop at Target, Costco, you buy gas, it's 1%. Um, you get 15,000 bonus points, which has a $150 value after you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days of account opening. So I actually purchased gold on one gold for my first um, 15 first $1,500 and got it well below spot because of that promotion. Um, it offers 0% APR for purchases for 12 months. So if you want to buy something and pay for it later, this is a great option. And it offers 0% um, balance transfer APR for 12 months as well. So if you have high interest rate debt, you can transfer it onto this credit card and worry about paying your interest later. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so th there you have it, guys. If you are uh, you know, looking to uh, all get some money uh, that you need immediately. I think this uh, card that uh, Patrick is talking about uh, will be useful. So how can people apply? Because do, you, do they go to your website or how does that work? Yeah, there's actually two versions of the card available, and we could get into these companies more in a bit too. But if you like physical metal, you could apply on uh, the bullion card dot atmex that's apmex dot com um, and then if you like the the vaulted metals um, it's the bullion card dot one gold dot com and the way they work is if you apply in the atmex side your points essentially become like a gift card balance that you could use to redeem in any amount and any time you want for any of the twenty five thousand plus products available at atmex so if you like gold you like silver you can automatically redeem it um, the the option that I use is actually one gold but the way one gold is is since it, we're selling precious metals in a vault, we could sell metal in 0 0.001 ounce increments. So instead of selling a one ounce coin of gold or, 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 or silver, we sell fractional ounces. So 
with one gold, you could essentially invest your rewards directly into gold. So like if I bought gas, I spent a hundred dollars in gas, I get basically a dollar in gold in my one gold account. And the system does it automatically for me. Oh, awesome. Right now, uh, it is no news uh, for us to talk about inflation. Everybody all around the world, we are feeling this inflation. And uh, I know many people are wondering uh, where should they invest or how should they protect their portfolio? Do you have any word or any recommendation in terms of how investors can position their portfolio during this inflationary period? Yeah, so I always like to look at history. Um, obviously, everyone's portfolio allocation is going to be different depending on, on where you are in life. But let's look at history and let's see what history could tell us too. So I think right now you could look at inflation. It's running at 7.1% year over year, basically the highest in 40 plus years. Anywhere you go, you could see that things are more expensive um, you, wherever you live in the world. Um, we actually had inflationary cycles in the U.S. back in the 1960s and in the 1970s, too. And during these cycles, um, the Fed was raising interest rates similar to what they're doing today. Inflation was double digits. But basically, let, let's look at, at those periods, too. So in the 1960s, we had an inflationary period. It took the Fed nine years to resolve that inflationary period. Uh, if you look at the 1970s, we had a similar inflationary period. It took the Fed five years to resolve that. So they got a little better. Um, so where are we today? Um, just last year in 2021 in january inflation was 1.4 percent, and we're about two years in right now i personally don't think the fed has inflation under control i think it's going to get sticky at some level i don't think it's going to be seven percent next year but maybe it stays at four or five percent and it stays there for several months and keep in mind the fed's mandate is to have a two percent inflation so even if you're at four or five percent you're you're two two and a half percent higher than what the fed is is targeting um, so with that in mind, like let's look at, at how different assets perform over this inflationary cycle. Yes. So if I held cash, which I would not recommend you hold a lot of cash, obviously you could hold some cash for liquidity in case there are buying opportunities. But let's say you held cash, five years of inflation, assuming that inflation lasts the same period as the 1970s, is going to erode about a third percent, a, about 30 percent of your cash, cash is purchasing power. So obviously not the ideal case. If you held the cash and inflation lasted nine years, like it did in the 1960s, you're going to get about 55% of your purchasing power is going to be eroded too. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've, you, you've heard times too, like you talk to any of the older generations and you probably hear them saying, hey, I got a cup of coffee for 10 cents. I got a candy bar for a nickel. And you hear all these things. And I mean, that's basically the, the value of the dollar going down. Um, and unfortunately, with high inflation here, that's going to continue in the future. So I would not recommend you hold cash. Um, let's uh, not a lot of cash. Let's look at stocks, for example. In the 1960s and the 1970s, if you look at the S&P 500, the S&P was actually down 26% um, over that nine-year inflationary period in the 1960s. And it only increased 4% um, over that five-year inflationary period in the 1970s. And keep in mind, you had double-digit inflation. So I think inflation was around 12% in the 1960s, almost 15% in the 1970s. So cash is not great. Stocks are probably going to be flat to down. Um, let's look at gold now. In the 1960s, gold went up 5x from $35 to $200 um, during that first inflationary cycle. And then in the 1970s, it went up from $100 to $850. So it made an 8x move. Um, obviously, no one knows his, if, if history will repeat or if these numbers will, will repeat again. But that's what history says, is, is gold's likely to do well in high interest rate um, inflationary cycles. Oh, good. So when we talk about precious metals, uh, are we referring to gold only or there are other metals uh, that we can consider? Maybe silver or other metals? Yeah, so there, we primarily have four precious metals that we sell at Atmex. There's gold, there's silver, there's platinum and palladium. <clears throat> In terms of how people are, are, are putting their dollars, about 65% of the dollars that are sales revenue at Atmex is gold. So people primarily are going into gold. About 30% is silver. So, so you have a lot of people getting into silver as well. And the remaining 5% people are getting into platinum and palladium. But basically, there's four types of precious metals. Okay. So Patrick, I must confess to you, I have not been investing in any <laughs> form of precious metal. But I have, um, I'm well invested in the stock market. And as you know already, I'm feeling the pinch right now because S&P is down, Dow is down, everything is down right now. Uh, in terms of allocation, uh, I, I, for stock market, I've heard about 60-40, maybe 
do um, stocks and bonds, depending on your age and all those uh, different factors. In terms of assets diversification or allocation, how would what would you recommend? Um, what's the right mix between precious metals, real estate, or even stock? What 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 would you recommend? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a great question too. And once again, I like to look at history too. Um, let, let's let history be our guide. But typically, as you kind of alluded to, if you went to a financial planner and you said, "Hey, I have a, a portfolio that I want to allocate," he's he or she is going to say, "Okay, you allocate a percent stock, percent bonds." And the thought there is. If you want high risk, high volatility, basically higher returns, higher volatility, you do stocks. If you want your lower return, lower volatility, you do bonds. And if you want something in a mix between, you do a percent stock, percent bonds. Uh, but let's look at history too. So I'm looking at the period in the last 50 years. So from the early 1970s up till today, um, and I'm going to look at real returns over a 10 year period too. So I'm assuming that you're help, you're holding on to this portfolio for at least 10 years. So I'm not going to penalize stocks in 2008. I'm not going to reward gold in 2011. Let's normalize some of these spikes. Um, but if you had a hundred percent stock portfolio on a real return basis, so this is adjusting for inflation, it's going to average about a 7% real return every single year and have a volatility of about 5%. So you're, that's your standard deviation, how well you sleep at night. Obviously, no one wants a portfolio going up 50%, down 50%. You're going to drive yourself crazy. So you know that, that's that's 100% stock portfolio. Your bond portfolio has a lower return, lower standard deviation. So that 100% bond portfolio has a 5% uh, real real. Uh, return over that over that 50 year period and a 3% standard deviation. So about 2% lower than that stock portfolio, um, both in return and standard deviation deviation. And then lastly, let's say you allocated 80% to the S&P, 20% to gold. Over that same 50 year period, your S&P and gold portfolio is going to return 6.7%. So 30 basis points less than your 100% stock portfolio. However, your standard deviation is now 2.7%, so much lower than that that bond portfolio. And it's all it's all they have a, a whole portfolio efficiency frontier. There's a lot of analysis that that people do on this, but the the big benefit is gold is a negatively correlated asset, so a lot of times it helps to diversify or offset some of that risk with 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 your stocks. Awesome. So, as a business development uh, director, how do you grow your business because i saw that you played a key role in the growth of your company upmex uh maybe you guys did over 250 percent plus uh on marketplaces right like ebay amazon so what do you do as a business development director yeah, a lot of it is, is just about getting the, the right products to people at the right price, just br getting that visibility out there. Uh, we were we were on eBay before. We're currently on eBay. We're currently on Walmart. We were on Amazon, too. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of these are mainstream shopping platforms, too. And a lot of times, unfortunately, people don't know how to buy gold. Um, if, if you just went to the main, mainstream public, you went to someone in the street, say, how, how do you buy gold? They're like, I don't know. Do I go to a pawn shop? Like, how do, how do I go there? How do I start with gold? So, like, we wanted to bring gold to the public and being one of the largest precious metals dealers, we had that instant credibility. We have the 25,000 products. We've been in business 15 plus years. Um, people just said, hey, this is one of the best ones, best dealers to buy from. So people saw it. You know, they had a dealer, they had the backing of a lot of the marketplaces. Like if you buy on eBay, you buy on Walmart or any of these marketplaces, you have that protection too. So if in case you don't get that item, you could, you know, open a claim, which obviously will ship you the item. Uh, but you had the, the dual layer, um, you had Atmex, then you had the marketplace, but it was just about bringing a lot of visibility to precious metals and pricing it um, at an attractive price that that's near the commodity price. And, and a lot of people just got in. So you said people don't know how to buy gold. And I think you are right because I don't know how to buy gold. Uh, should I just go to a pawn shop and just uh, <laughs> buy gold? So how can we buy gold, uh, Patrick? Yeah, so our company likes to provide uh, multiple ways to buy gold. Um, first, I would say before you you decide to buy from anyone, myself included, first do do your own Google search. Like search for you know the reputation, search for reviews on these companies. Uh, ask other people too. But you know what we like to do too is is one way we like to sell gold is through Atmex. So Atmex we call as like the Amazon of precious metals. We have twenty five thousand plus products in stock: gold, silver, platinum, palladium. You get coins. You could get bars. Um, you could get like collector coins, which are called numismatics. You could get like gift and novelty stuff. But 
with Amex, you basically add something to your cart and check out. You, you put your payment method in and you buy it and it ships to your house, just like any e-commerce site. And from there, you take possession of your gold. You could choose to store it in your safety deposit box, your, your personal safe, you could hide it in your house. Um, that's Atmex. So the nice thing about physical gold, um, and I recommend that everyone has physical gold too, at least to some extent, it's tangible, it's off the grid. No one knows you have it. You can pass it on from generation to generation. It's 100% private, unlike a lot of other assets, which you know, hopefully you never run into any lawsuit or anything like that. But a lot of assets are confiscatable. Um, with gold, no one needs to know you have it other than yourself. Uh, but I think one of the problems with physical gold, and this is where we get into one gold too, is a lot of times people start with a little bit. They start with a couple thousand dollars, becomes tens of thousands. And if you're fortunate, it becomes a six or seven figure sum. Um, ideally not the best place to store a seven figure, a million plus dollars in your house uh, of gold. And we have customers that spent north of $50 million with us too, but you know, not, not the ideal case to store millions of dollars of gold. So what we did back in 2018 is we partnered with a, a company called Sprott Asset Management, Sprott Asset Management out of Canada. They have about 22 billion in assets under management. And we partnered together to form an, a modern way to buy gold. And it's called one gold. Uh, many people call one gold like the Robin Hood or precious or Robin Hood or Coinbase of precious metals because it is so intuitive and easy to use. Uh, what one gold is? It's an online investment platform that allows you to buy gold, silver, and platinum uh, stored at various vaults around the world. So we have the U.S., Canada, Switzerland, and the U.K. You get to choose. Uh, what we do is we first start by having various agreements with Brinks, with Loomis, with Royal Canadian Mint, basically credible minting company or, or um, storage companies. We then buy like 400 ounce gold bars, 1,000 ounce silver bars. So imagine these are the big bars you see in movies. Um, we then make it, or you know, not, movies probably won't have the real ones, but you know, imagine like a big vault like that. Um, we then make the metal available for sale. Um, customers then have part ownership or full ownership, depending on how much metal you own, in the metal stored at a vault. Uh, Pricing is attractive. We sell gold for. 80 basis points over spot, silver for 2% over spot. All the metal is audited. It's regularly insured. And lastly, let's say you, you have this vaulted position at one gold and you said, hey, I want physical instead. We offer you the option to swap any of this physical and redeem it for any of the 25,000 products available at Atmex. So your business model, is it like B2B or you guys do B2C directly? It's, it's, I would say it's, it's 95 plus percent uh, consumer. So oh. these are people. These are people looking for portfolio protection, diversification. People who want something that's tangible, something that's that's off the grid, outside of the system. Okay, let's say a listener out there uh, today wants to start investing in gold, in any precious precious metal, for that matter. What is the step? What and if they want to deal with you, you you guys, Acmex, a $15 billion company, you've been around for over 20 years, you have the reputation, they want to reach out and deal directly with your company. Should they just go to your website or how does it work? Yeah, if you want the physical, you could go to the, the website, that's atmex.com, that's A-P-M-E-X.com, that's for physical metal. If you want the vaulted, you could go to onegold.com, that's O-N-E-G-O-L-D.com. One of the things I would say for everyone who's who's new into precious metals is look at the pricing too. So so gold and silver and, and platinum and palladium have a spot price, which is basically the current price of the metal. Um, you want to be able to to understand how how your product is priced relative to that spot. And I could let you know that like you will pay over that spot price when you buy, and you might get around that spot price, maybe over, maybe under when you sell. And the reason you pay over for it is I like to say like if you look at coffee, coffee's two dollars a pound. If you went to tar Starbucks and said, hey, give me coffee for two, $2 a pound, they're going to say, good luck. We're not selling you because there's people involved in the manufacturing, the distribution of that coffee. And eventually you're paying way more than the commodity price for that Starbucks coffee. Um, same thing with gold, too. There is cost in terms of manufacturing, minting, refining, sending these to retailers. Um, obviously, every party makes a little bit of a spread. But I would say look at look at what you could buy the product at and look at what the dealer would 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 buy it back from you. So what you could sell it at and look at that complete round trip transaction costs. And then you'll know if you're getting a good deal too, because a lot of times the, the there, unfortunately there's a lot of people who are not overly legitimate in our business. They like, they make way more margin than they, they should. And they'll sell you something. And then if you ask them, what, what would you buy it back for? They're like, oh, we're, we're not interested in that because oh, okay. they, they don't want to give you a price because it's too low. But, you know, ask your dealer, say, hey, if I bought this gold bar today at, I don't know, let's say $50 over spot, what would you pay for it? 
And if they say, hey, it's it's ten dollars, twenty dollars over spot, you can say, okay, well, I'm, I'm think I'm buying a, a two thousand dollar item. They're making basically a round trip on me, like I don't know, like 30, 30 40 bucks. Okay, right. it's probably a reasonable spread. If the dealer says, sorry, I'm not interested in buying it, or, or, or they they hesitate to give you a quote, then then maybe that's someone you need to stay away from. Oh, that's that's good. Thank thanks for sharing that. So. I can see that you are very passionate about uh, what you do, about uh, <laughs> precious metals, and that's great. I want to ask you, uh, why do you think, or maybe before that, why should people invest in precious metals? I know you've given us the returns. What are yeah, the- I, I, I think a lot of things are cyclical. Like things go up and down. Nothing goes up forever. Nothing goes down forever. Th- things always run in cycles. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's let's look at like 2000 up to today. You had 2000 to 2000, let's say 10, 11. You had what you call a lost decade in stocks. I mean, you could Google it. There's information about this. Basically, stocks didn't do anything for that 10-year period. Right. You like a gold, on the other hand, gold went up from 250 to $1,900 in 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, and then fast forward 2011 to 2022, stocks went up fourfold. They went from 1250 to 4800. You know, amazing bull run. Gold, on the other hand, started at 1900, went down to 1050. Now it's about 1900. Uh, basically, didn't do anything for that 10-year period. Uh, like I said, nothing goes up forever. Nothing goes down forever. I just, I personally think that this is the time. You're seeing inflation here. Uh, you're seeing rising interest rates. I think stocks are going to struggle. I, I unfortunately think that the U.S. is heading into a major recession in the next next year. And I think it's, it's time for this cycle to reverse. Stocks are likely going to struggle. I personally would honestly not be surprised to see another lost decade in stocks. I mean, you have to figure we've had this, this 14-year boom from 2008 up until 2022, where we haven't had a recession. It's it's just time to clean out some of the excess. Um, but you know, if stocks have that, that lost decade again, gold's likely to do well. Oh, wow. So what trend are you seeing in the precious metal industry? Yeah, so in the last couple of years, we've been seeing crazy demand. Uh, 2019 was probably our last normal year. Uh, back then, we did about a billion dollars in sales. Um, and then obviously, 2020 hit. You had the pandemic. You had the, the, the crash in March um, where a lot of things sold off. Um, a lot of people started getting into precious metals when they saw that the government was just printing a ton of money. Um, I don't know the, the exact stats, but I, I think it was something like 40% of, of the money in, in existence has been printed in the last couple of years th- since COVID. Um, a scary thought to think about it. If, if you hold cash, it's like, well, you know, what's your cash worth if, if the Federal Reserve could just make more of it just, just with a click, click of a button? Uh, but we're seeing a lot more customers come into precious metals. If you look at at 2021 and 2022, um, we're seeing about double the customers that we saw back in 2019 in terms of purchasing customers. Um, we're seeing sales at more than double. We smashed through the $2 billion mark last year. We're going to pass $2 billion in sales this year again. Um, I think a lot of people are just seeing inflation's here. Um, the economy is likely to struggle. Um, it's interesting. You see stocks and bonds both down this year. Uh, people are saying something something's different about what they're seeing this year, and they're looking for something something to run to. Awesome. So as we are wrapping up, uh, Patrick, I have my rapid fire questions for you. Sure. <laughs> Maybe a minute or so, just take uh, to respond to this. So what do you enjoy most about your job as the business uh, development director for Upmix? I think everything is always changing. Uh, we're, we always like to innovate over here. We have a lot of interesting products coming down the roadmap. I mean, like I said, I was doing marketplaces back in 2014. We launched One Gold in 2018, uh, launched the Bullion Card this year in 2020, uh, 2022. Um, we have a lot of things coming up in the next couple of years, and that's what keeps me excited. Good. I see your passion. I feel your passion for what you do uh, in terms of your work. So what do you do for fun? For fun, I love traveling um, and I love watches too. Um, traveling is probably one of my biggest passions. Um, I've been to over 50 countries so far. We have three three pretty big trips um, next year too. So uh, it's that that's what I love doing. That's a lot. That's good. 50 countries. Oh, wow. That's a lot, uh, Patrick. So um, obviously, we all know that there are a lot of problems all around the world. If you have that magic wand, if you can solve one problem for humanity, what problem will you solve? 
I think to me, it's, it's, it, I, I personally, for my life, I like focusing on happiness. I just wish that people would be happier more in the world. I mean, it, it could be, a, I mean, for some people that could be food on the table for other people that could be a new car. I mean, I just want more happiness. I mean, I, I think a lot of times people don't focus on, on that being kind of like one of the, the big end goals. Oh, so you are the Mr. Happy. I like that. You want people, more people to be happy. And I think that's important because I really think that if there are more happy people around the world, there will be more peace around the world and that will yep. make humanity thrive. I like that. So uh, as we are closing, uh, is there any other thing you would like to uh, talk about that we did not touch on? Yeah, just to summarize, I would say that we're in an interesting time right now. I would recommend that everyone have an allocation to gold, um, whether that's 1%, 5%, 10%. It's up to you to really decide. Um, I would say start with a little bit, see if that works. If if you feel happy with that, then maybe that's your allocation. If you feel that you're underweighted, maybe get a little bit more. And at some point, you'll feel that it's probably the right allocation for you. But I think the world's going to go into an interesting time. Like I said, it's it's been 14 years in the US from 2008 to 2022 since we since we have this major economic boom. And, and like I said, things are cyclical. I think that that we're, we might be in for some pretty tough times in the next couple of years. And, and I would say, you know, make sure you're, you're positioned correctly. Make sure your portfolio is. Make sure you have extra savings and extra food on the table too. I mean, you, you never know. I mean, the life will throw you curveballs. Um, and if you want to get into precious metals, I mean, you could check out the, the physical side at apmex.com. That's A-P-M-E-X.com. If you like the vaulted, um, check out onegold.com. That's O-N-E-G-O-L-D.com. If you like that bullion card too, it's there's two options, uh, the bullion card.atmex.com and the bullion card.onegold.com. I like it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Patrick. It's been awesome having you. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy this conversation. So thank you. Great. Well, thanks for having me on. This episode of Winner's Ways podcast has come to a close. We hope you enjoy and learn something from today's show. We want you to win and excel in all areas of your life. And we regularly explore and share information with our listeners to empower them to win. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast for more tips and strategies to help you find the success that you've always dreamt of. And don't forget to rate and review so that we can continue to bring you more podcast episodes to empower you. We will love to have you again next week. Now, keep winning. Thank <laughs> you.